Yo, how is it going Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Should the Bears sign Larry Warford and how much would this addition help the offensive line? We're going to be answering these questions and many more today in episode number 35 of Uncut. Welcome back to the show guys. I would like to say before we get started, do us a favor, subscribe if you are new to the channel. We're trying to hit 1.5k subs by the end of the week. I'm pretty sure we're about 50 away, so do us a favor. Keep up the support. You guys have been absolutely loving the Uncut series recently, and we're going to keep pumping out videos for you guys. And you're seeing this on Monday night, and we got a ton of good stuff uh, coming for you guys this week, so be sure to click the bell to get notifications whenever we post. I am your host, Chris Malthy, and today I'm joined with video producer and editor at Bear Down, who makes quite the amount of cameos here uh, on Uncut, uh, Zach Rimba. Zach, how's it going, man? Going pretty well, going pretty well. So you are driving to Kenosha, Wisconsin today to get a haircut. Yep, like 40 <laughs> minutes. So. Oh man, yeah, uh, I, I do know barber shops uh, open in about two weeks, hopefully in Illinois. Um, but that being said, I know how long your hair is, so uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get yeah, right it's into it. a struggle, it. man. Yeah, it's no kidding, struggle. it really is. I, I had a beard there for a while, but let's get right into it today. We're here to talk about Larry Warford, and before we get into it, I would like to say that there have been conflicting reports that the Bears are and aren't interested in Warford. About two weeks ago, Brad Biggs, uh, the head of the Chicago Tribune, Bears Beat, reported that the Bears were interested in signing Warford. Uh, normally, Biggs, the most reliable source, I would say, as far as Bears news goes. He breaks literally everything. And then there was a report by Pro Football Talk that the Bears were uninterested the day after. Uh, personally, when I think about it, I just think that Obviously, Warford hasn't been signed. I think he's waiting to see how his market plays out. So, therefore, we are recording this today under the assumption that, you know, there's there's still going to be some consideration there by Warford to come to Chicago. So, let's get right into it. I'm reading off a little bit of a spiel about him, and then we'll get into some questions. So, he's 28 years old. He was drafted in 2013 by the Detroit Lions. Three straight Pro Bowl appearances in New Orleans the last three years. And he was caught argu arguably because of a bad contract that saved the Saints a lot of money after they drafted Cesar Ruiz out of Michigan in the first round this year. Uh, Warford had the 11th best guard grade in the league in 2019 per Pro Football Focus. 101 regular season starts, 44 in three seasons in New Orleans, and he also has five playoff starts for the Saints. So a little bit of playoff pedigree there as well. Also... You know, he was obviously cut, but that being said, he was selected to the Pro Football Focus 2019 Team of the Year. He only allowed two sacks in 2019, and he was injured throughout a, a decent bit of the season. But, Zach, I want to ask you, I mean, obviously, when you look at the Bears' interior offensive line right now, they lost Kyle Long there, but they still have James Daniels and Cody Whitehair. How much do you think this signing, if the Bears did bring in Warford, would help the offensive line? Yeah, Warford uh, was really good, obviously. Um, made the Pro Bowl in all three of his seasons with the Saints. Um, I, I think that it would be a great addition, just purely even if he doesn't step in, if there are concerns of his uh, of him staying healthy or um, if he's, you know, I, I feel like he could come in and definitely be a piece that the Bears are missing right now at that line and, and uh, a piece that they need to strengthen. But uh, if, if anything, it'd be great just to see him go out there and push these guys uh, currently on the line to uh, be better, and that's something that, that we would need this offseason for sure. If you look at the Bears' offensive line additions this offseason, they signed Jermaine Fetty to a one-year deal as well as Jason Spriggs, uh, drafted Arlington Hambright and Lachavius Simmons there in the seventh round of the NFL draft. You could say that the line's going to be better than it was in 2019, uh, maybe not incredibly better, you know, 29th ranked line in football last year. I think this Warford edition could be great if the Bears can come to terms on a deal with him. Um, he's someone who has flashed in, in run blocking previously. Uh, he, he's been a little bit questionable at times. Uh, just in general, there have been some question marks surrounding him. I can't break down specifically what that is because I, I, I haven't read about him for a couple weeks. But you really can't deny his success. 11th best guard in the league in 2019 with how the Bears line performed there uh, in 2019. I think this would be an incredible addition. Also, 
has been able to stay pretty healthy, had a little bit of issues last year in New Orleans, but 101 regular season starts and also those five playoff starts. Uh, he knows what it's like to be a part of a, uh, a winning culture, and I think it's something that could definitely not only fill the missing piece for the Bears with Kyle Long heading out, but just also would provide just a winning player and someone who's coming from a championship pedigree down there in New Orleans. You know, you might say, no, they haven't won a Super Bowl, but they definitely are a very successful team every year. So, Zach, I know the line was ranked 29th in 2019. Um, but that being said, you know, James Daniels, Cody Whitehair are probably the two anchors to the Bears' current offensive line after a down year by Charles Leno. Uh, if we do sign uh, Warford, you know, as crazy as it is to think this, do you think the Bears will have one of the best interior offensive lines in football? Um, that would be something that I think we'd have to just have to wait and see and, and maybe after if we did sign Warford and it turns out in our favor and he does uh, produce great things with this interior offensive line, then that's something that we can point to afterwards. But I think for now, I'm not too sure I would say that just because, uh, again, like there was, I mean, even with James Daniels and Cody Whitehair, there were some slip ups last year and, and obviously it takes a whole a whole line to, to make that piece work work perfectly. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely, it could be questionable. I think that's a, that's a debate that can be had. Um, should we start work for it? Yeah, and I apologize. My big Labrador Retriever is going crazy downstairs because the doorbell rang, and that's not something that has happened too constantly during quarantine. But you hit it on the head. I mean, uh, it might not be one of the best interior offensive lines in football still, but I like James Daniels a lot. You know, I might be a little bit biased because I'm an Iowa Hawkeyes fan. Uh, Cody Whitehair, obviously someone who has produced throughout his career, went healthy. He was easily the best piece on the line last year. And then bringing in someone like Warford really fills in that, that gaping hole left by Kyle Long. You know, it's unfortunate that the Bears weren't that great when Long was in Chicago, um, or at least when he was playing well, is what I meant to say. Um, you know, the last couple of years when he ended up getting hurt, the team was good, and it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to produce just being injured down the stretch. But I'm eternally grateful for what Kyle Long has done for his time in Chicago, has done during his time in Chicago. But uh, I think Warford would be easily the best replacement unless you're looking at someone like a Caliche Osameli, uh, who, who's also still out there. So, Zach, obviously, you know, it was tough watching the offensive line there in 2019. Uh, we all expect improvements in 2020, even though the Bears didn't do an incredible amount to address the offensive line there uh, this offseason, you know. Uh, if Warford isn't someone who signed, the, the, the interesting piece is Ifedi might get a chance to start at guard for the first time since 2016. Uh, he's obviously a former 31st overall pick there in the 2016 NFL Draft. And Jason Spriggs also brings an interesting case to the table. You know, a former second round pick picked in the same year as Cody Whitehair. Uh, ended up having some injuries, but he's played in 37 career games with nine career starts. So I want to ask you this. If they do acquire Warford, and if they don't, I mean, just in general, where do you expect the offensive line to finish ranking-wise in 2020? Um, it's a tough one to answer. Okay, let's uh, let's just say I'm I'm gonna say lower 20s. Okay. I'm gonna say lower 20s. I think that they need to. I think that last year there were so many pieces like Kyle Long going out. Um, you know there were. I mean, the offense couldn't produce as it was. Um, I mean, there was simply no run game. I think that we address some of those issues, even if it is with Jason Spriggs and Jermaine Effetti. But you have to look at these guys. Um, Jermaine Effetti, he was switched up. He switched up positions in Seattle. Um, and like we said, he had his best year at guard. And so maybe that switches a lot of things around for him. Maybe that um, is, is the piece that he needed for him to be uh, a good structure on that line. I think that the line, after regressing so much last year, needs to step up this year. And I'll, I think that Cody White here, uh, leading the head of that, um, I think that this line is going to be lower 20s, I'll say. Um, I still don't think it's going to bounce back that crazy, but it's going to be enough. It's going to do the job, and that's all we need. So, At the end of the day, we just need improvements, and I think an improvement is something that's going to be big. You know, you said that you don't think the line's going to blow anyone out of the water, and I absolutely agree. I'm going to go top 25. Uh, I think they finish between 20 and 25th. It's a good point you bring up, you know, Ifedi and Spriggs coming into a new system. Obviously, the Bears this offseason putting in a ton of trust 
into Juan Castillo, someone who's been very successful in the past as a run game coordinator and as an offensive line coach in Baltimore and in Buffalo. You know, I think a fresh start for guys like Springs, Spriggs and Fetty can only help. And I think those guys also realize that they're signing one-year deals and they were former high picks that might not have a job soon if they can't produce. So I think they may have opportunities. That being said, I mean, I still think bringing in Warford is a great idea, but I'm going to go with, I think, top 25 uh, for the line finishing in 2020. And just overall, you know, whether it's Foles or Trubisky back there, uh, we need better blocking for them. And then also, obviously, for David Montgomery, uh, someone that we hope can reach 1,000 rushing yards there in 2020, something I'm actually pretty confident about myself. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode number 35 of Uncut. We're absolutely zooming through these. I mean, we started this, I guess, this series like maybe a month, month and a half ago, and we're getting close to episode 50 now. So we're going to keep grinding these out for you guys. Hopefully getting out Bears content every day. This week is a big week. We've got interviews coming up soon with Patrick Manley, Tom Grassi. We've got a 53-man roster prediction coming up soon. And you are seeing this on Monday night. And if you haven't already checked out, our 2020-2021 uh, mixtape is actually up now. So go check that out. We will uh, leave a link to that in the description. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in once again. If you want more content from us, head over to BearDown.com. You can find columns, articles, and blogs all over there on our website. Uh, we're grinding on there now, now that it's summertime, to get a ton of content up for you guys. You can also find the links to our Instagram fan pages down in the description. And if you are on social media, you can follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at BearDown. Zach Rimbos, it's been a pleasure to speak with you this afternoon. Any last words, buddy? Um, stay safe, everybody. I think that it is awesome that we're slowly seeing sports return here. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, uh, football will be on time still. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty sure it will be. But um, hopefully, we can get fans at, at some point here. But things are looking up. Um, hopefully, that doesn't change and, and uh, go the, the way that it went earlier this year. But um, yeah, other than that, stay safe. Uh, keep supporting us. We're, we're very appreciative of, of you guys helping us out here uh, during this time and, and uh, bear down. Absolutely. I mean, I think the sports that we have right now back are UFC and golf, which surprisingly enough, I'm actually pretty big fans of. I've been a, a big fan of uh, mixed martial it. arts for a while. <laughs> Anything is better than nothing. And at the end of the day, I mean, whether or not football fans are back, um, you know, whether it's on a limited capacity or not at all, I think just the NFL playing out uh, is better than anything at the end of the day because you'd rather have football than nothing at all. You know, the moral uh, the moral of this episode is don't drive an hour and a half away to get a haircut. <laughs> but, as, but as always, you know, hopefully you guys can wait two weeks for those of you who are in the Chicagoland area for barber shops to open on a, on a limited basis. But that'll pretty much do it for this one, guys. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malfi. Do us a favor, Bears fans. Continue to stay safe. Continue to flatten the curve. We're, uh, we're getting better. You know, the positivity rate... Uh, is increase, <clears throat> decreasing, actually, which I think is a good thing uh, as far as Chicagoland goes. So hopefully we're going to hit that peak soon and everything's going to start getting better. And as always, do us a favor and bear down. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace.